Okay. Right, well, something uh, about tech due diligence, and uh, I hope you can see this slide all right. Um, so when I first started M&A, which I think my first deal was JP Morgan Chase uh, coming, coming together. Um, but when I first started doing due diligence, it was very much the left-hand side. And I think some of you can probably remember, you know, all these on-premise little databases and um, code, and everyone was using Microsoft Access little applications and um, uh, trying to do that. So, and I, I used to have to go to a lawyer's data room. There wasn't an online data room. I'd, I'd actually have to go and get a folder, photocopy stuff, and then go back to my office and write up my findings. So that's what it's like. But the world's definitely moved on, and and some really sort of sexy stuff has come about. Um, not just the internet, but obviously AI and blockchain and machine learning. And we've seen a massive sort of step uh, shift where it's not IT anymore, it's tech, it's digital, and it's a revenue maker. It's not a, it's not a cost line, just a cost line anymore. And you're getting a lot of um, companies that are saying, Alexis, tell me what the technical debt is on this business. How much of a code rewrite have I really got to do? Because to me, this is a bit of a black box. Or this is a bit of a time bomb. So as you probably know that SAP, one of the most successful software companies, is actually written in its own code, ABAP. Most ERP software companies have written in their own code. You wouldn't dream of doing that anymore. Okay, so technical debt can cover a lot of things. It can cover um, not just the code, but the infrastructure, the people, uh, the key dependencies that you may have. And also you wanna benchmark the business as well. Um, you know, uh, one, one play that TCS and other, other outsourcers can do, they can provide a lot of augmentation resource. So suddenly you want to get into other regions, other areas, or you want to step up on a big project, then you would go to a third party provider and suddenly you've got this sort of labor arbitrage win where you know adding another 100 developers is not actually going to cost you an arm and a leg, um, particularly if you're based in Northern Europe. Um, and you still get the quality and, um, and you get the management and some of the best practices coming through. So I like to think anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, in terms of how do people want to consume a tech due diligence, the truth is, is when you're talking about a database, most people do switch off a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, but in, in reality, uh, all of these things under high volumes can lock and the code can lock as well.